Hi hey guys, and welcome back to a new video on a new episode of Android Basics. In this video, I will talk about services, but foreground services specifically. What that is, when you should use these, and most importantly, how you should use these. So till now in this Android Basics playlist, we only covered use cases where our app is actually active, where the user sees something, can click some buttons, or maybe also receive some events from other apps. So broadcast, what I what I talked about in the last video. But those were really only to, to handle one-time events very quickly. But what if your app actually needs to run in the background? For example, you have a music player app. Then the user would normally expect that your app also plays music when it's minimized, or you have a running tracker app that tracks wherever you, you want to have a run, then you also expect that the, the tracking doesn't stop when you minimize the app. And that's where so-called services come into play. A service is an Android component, just like an activity, but with a difference that it doesn't have a user interface, but runs in the background. And there are now different types of such services. On the one hand, we have general normal services. But on the other hand, as this video is called, we also have these so-called foreground services. The difference is that with the normal services, the user is not aware that the service is running and that your app is doing something in the background. And with foreground services, the user knows that. So for example, if your app just synchronizes some data periodically, it doesn't need to do that in a foreground service because the user does not need to be aware that your app is currently syncing something. On the other hand, if your app is playing music, then the user should be aware that your app is actually doing something in the background by seeing a notification where the user can also control what the service is currently doing. So they can pause the music, they can skip to the next song, these kinds of things. And the problem now with these normal services where the user is not aware that these run is that they simply can't be guaranteed to run indefinitely. Because if the Android system needs memory, it might just decide to kill your service. With foreground services, on the other hand, that can't happen because they require that as long as the service runs, the user sees a notification. So for example, hey, you're currently having an active run and this is your time. Because the Android system then assumes that the user wants the service to stay active, it won't kill it even if it's low on memory. And that is why nowadays we mainly use foreground services when it comes to using services, because for these services that just sync some data in the background, that execute some longer running tasks in the background, we have something called Work Manager, which I will talk about in the next video. So it's just rather rare that you use these normal general services. There are still use cases, but usually if you use a service, it's a foreground service nowadays. And to get started with that, let's just dive into coding and create a service class in our root package. New class called, yeah, let's just call it running service and we simulate a little bit running a tracker app here, just super simple with a static information. Select class, hit enter, and here we want to inherit from service. So even though we are creating a uh, foreground service, it just needs to inherit from service. And inside of the service itself, we now specify what kind of service that is. You can see we need to implement a function here, which is called onBind, which receives an intent and returns an I binder. What is that? That function is used to create something called a bound service. So what you can also do with a service is you can have one active instance and multiple components connect to that single instance and have done yeah, a stream for, for communication to communicate with that service and also receive such events um, or callbacks back from that service. If that is a use case of so multiple apps need to connect to one single service, for example, then you need this. And then you also can't use something like Work Manager as I will cover in the next video, but we want to keep it simple here and we just want to return now. So we just say nothing can actually bind to the servers. I will show you different ways of communicating with a service from an activity, but let's let's keep it simple here. So right now the service obviously doesn't do anything. Let's change that. Let's first of all define different commands that our activity or other Android components can send to the service. On the one hand, we want to decide when we launch the service, so when we start it, and want to decide when we stop it, for example, if the run is finished. And we do this by overriding the onStart command function. This is triggered whenever an, another Android component sends an intent to this running service. So again, intents are the way how the communication works or how intentions are specified and sent to the service. And this intent can, of course, contain data. So depending on what we want to do here, we can just use a different action in our intent. So let's just go down here and specify an item class for the different actions we can have for this running service. And in this simple example, it's just start and stop. But you could potentially have a lot of these actions depending on what your service needs to do. And then here on start command, before we return, we want to check 
when the intent action is now actions.start.toString, then we want to call a function to start our service, which we'll create in a moment. And if it's actions.stop.toString, we want to stop our service. In this case, it's very simple to stop because we don't even need to free up any resources or so. So we don't need to create a function for that separately. We can just call stop self, which will stop this services instance. Starting on the other hand is a bit more complex. So we need to do something there. So let's go down here and create a private function to start our service. And as I said, if we want to make this a foreground service, it needs to come with a persistent notification because otherwise the user wouldn't be aware that there's a service running or that the app is doing something in the background. So what we need to do is we need to call start foreground. And this takes an ID and a notification. This ID corresponds to the specific notification. So if you want to update the notification, you would just call this function again with the same ID with the updated notification. But let's do it step by step. We want to choose one as the ID here. Don't choose zero. <laughs> I've made that mistake before. It won't work. It needs to be one at least. And now creating a notification is something we better do up here. So we create that val notification is equal to notification compat dot builder. And with this builder, we can now construct our very own custom notification. The user will then see when they swipe down their status bar. This will require the context. And as I showed you in a previous video about context, I also showed you that the service is also an Android component, which inherits from context. So for this context here, we can also simply pass this. Um, so the service instance, since every service is also a context. It's really the same as an activity. Um, so we can also get the application context this way. But this service context is now limited to the lifetime of the service. So every service also has a normal lifecycle just as an activity. It has an onCreate function, which you can override. It has an onDestroy function you can override, just not all the fancy functions in between from an activity which relate to the user seeing something on the screen because obviously they, they don't see anything here. So this builder function is deprecated because we also need something else here. And that is a channel ID. So um, that corresponds to something we call notification channels on Android, which we need to create if we want to show a notification. So you can kind of think of this as a category for a specific set of notifications. So think of the Instagram app, then you might have a set of notifications that um, relate to receiving a message from, from a friend of yours. You might have a category for, yeah, if, if someone liked your post or interacted with your post. And then in the settings of your Android app, the user can decide whether they want to see notifications of a specific channel or not and then toggle these on or off. In our simple example we will just have one channel here since we only have one type of notification so let's call this running channel and then we can now configure our notification. First of all every single notification needs to have a small icon which is the icon that will show with the notification and inside of the status bar. Since we don't have an actual real icon here we can just refer to our drawable dot IC launcher foreground. This will, I think, just be the Android icon, which every app has by default. You can see it on the left here. The little Android hat will now be the icon for our notification. Of course, you can import custom icons for that. We then want to have a content title, which will be the title of our notification. So for example, um, run is active. We want to have a content info, um, no content text actually, which is the description. So here we could, for example, show the elapsed time which yeah, I will hard code here. So obviously we won't implement a timer. That would be too much for this video. But if you would have a timer here uh, and every time it updates to 51 seconds, 52 seconds, you would just create the same notification again with the updated uh, content text and call the start foreground function afterwards. Then we call that build and we have our notification, which we can then pass to start foreground right here. And we don't have any issues anymore. Right now, again, this won't do anything because we need to start this service from our activity by sending an intent to the service class with the start action defined, since that will then call our start function. This won't work yet because we don't have this running channel that we declared the ID of here because we actively need to create that when our app is actually launched. And we typically do that in our application class. So in on create of our application class, so just once um, when the app boots up. So let's create such a class in our root package. Let's call it running app, for example. Select class, make that inherit from application. I showed you that before in the context video. 
And here on Create, which is just called, when our app launches for the first time, or at least our instance of the app launches for the first time, if you close it and reopen it, then on Create will be called again. And these notification channels were introduced um, since Android Oreo, so we need to check if uh, our device is actually running on Android Oreo, because before that, these channels aren't needed. And we do that with build.version.sdk end to check the SDK version. And if that's uh, greater than or equal to build version codes, dot o for oreo then we only declare such a channel here which is a notification channel and this is now pretty simple the id needs to be the same as we defined in our um, notification the name is simply running notifications uh, this is just what the user will see in their app settings when they check what kind of notifications your app actually sends and an importance so how high your notification will display and how prominent it will be to the user if it maybe comes with a sound or vibration. Um, let's just choose notification manager that important high. You can see you can choose something here, low, max, default. Let's choose high. Then we need to get a so-called system service. So just a service that comes directly from the Android operating system. Um, since showing a notification is obviously something your app isn't allowed to do. So the Android system provides a service for that, which your app can then use. And that is called the notification manager. We can retrieve this with get system service by specifying a name. And that is just notification. Um, actually, it's context.notification service. Um, that is the name of the service we want. And we specify the type. That is a notification manager. Um, doesn't that work? OK, let's do it differently by saying as notification manager. So we just cast the result to a notification manager because this function could potentially return different types of service. And don't confuse these services here with the service recreated. Um, this is not a thing that always runs in the background. It's just a service the operating system provides for you to use such functionality outside of your app, such as showing notifications. So we then say a notification manager, create notification channel, and we pass in our channel. And if we now launch this, it will still not work. On the one hand, we need to go to our manifest because whenever we create such an Android component, such as a broadcast receiver, um, a service, an activity, we need to register it here. For broadcast receivers, only if it's static, but for services, we always need to register these here inside of our application tag. So below our activity, we can then have a service and we specify the name. It already suggests it here as running service and we can already close this. Of course, if your service can only receive a certain type of intents, you can also just uh, define an intent filter in it. But in our case, we just want to send any type of intent to our service. And something we need with foreground services is a permission or actually two permissions. So I haven't made a video about permissions specifically in this Android Basics uh, playlist because I have a quite detailed video about permissions on Android already, which I will link somewhere up here on the description. I hope I don't forget that. But whenever your app wants to do something that is potentially considered sensitive or sensitive action, then you need to define that as a permission. So for example, if your app needs access to the camera, um, because Android obviously wants to limit that your app can take unlimited photos of wherever the user is, so the user needs to know that your app actually uses the camera. And the same for using the microphone, for accessing the file system, but also for launching a foreground service and for showing notifications. So if we scroll up, we want to go here and specify so-called user's permission. On the one hand, foreground service. Um, that just specifies that our app uses a foreground service. That is a not so dangerous or sensitive permission. So uh, the user doesn't need to actually confirm that they are okay with um, launching a foreground service, but we need to specify it so the user can see in Google Play what the app uses or what the app, um, what, what kind of permissions it needs. But we also want to specify another user's permission to post notifications which is such a sensitive permission, which the user needs to request starting from yeah some kind of newer Android version at least. And I will really keep this super simple here to request this because um, properly requesting permissions on Android is quite a pain and quite a lot of work. Um, and because this is not the focus of this video to properly request permissions, I will do it super simple here and just have a simple call when we launch our main activity. I showed you this call before, I think, in a video, but it's in the end activity compat that request permissions. We pass in our activity. We pass in the permission array we want to request. In this case, it's manifest 
permission, post notifications. Again, we don't need to request the um, other permission for foreground services, but we also want to have a request code in case you want to respond to that permission request and see what the user answered. But again, I want to keep this simple. And also here you can see it complaint um, because this post notification permission is only needed for devices running on uh, API level 33 and up. So we can simply add a check again, build version, um, import build, alt enter, SDK int is um, greater than or equal to version codes S, I think it should be. So if we move this in here, then no, actually, what was it? Tiramisu, it's actually T. I always confuse these codes. So let's put in Tiramisu and there we go. And if you now think now it will finally work, nope, I have to disappoint you again. One more thing we need to do and that is we need to tag our application class and also register that in our manifest. And that's also kind of an Android component. And we need to tell our manifest, this is our application class. So we simply go to application, specify name, and it already tells us, hey, you might want to use the running app. So let's choose that. And now we actually have everything we need to properly launch and use a full grown service. But still, we don't have a button that actively launches it because right now it's just a class in our code, but it's not actively used. And for that, to change that, we're going to go to main activity and replace our UI code here with a column to just display two buttons um, on top of each other. So we might just center these, for example. We we'll first of all say, hey, we want to fill the whole sides of our screen with that column. We want to have a horizontal alignment of center horizontally and also a vertical arrangement of center. And then in here, we can put two buttons. When the first button is clicked, we now want to send an intent from this activity to our service to launch it. So we want to say intent, the action of that intent will now be the action that we need to attach here to start our service. So it would be running service that actions that start to string, since it's an enum, we need to convert it to a string. And we say that also, and this time, instead of saying start activity, we say start service. There's also start foreground service, but these don't really make a difference here. Um, you can also use start service and just pass the intent we created with that start action. We can then give this button the text of start service or start run, for example, if you're still in the context of a running tracker app. We copy this button, paste it below, and replace the action with stop here. This might be a bit confusing here since you still use start service to stop it, but start service is really just used to deliver the intent we're creating here. It does not have anything to do with how the service interprets and uses that intent. So if the service decides, okay, if it's actually that action, then I stop myself, then that's completely up to the service. So now let's change this text to stop run and finally try to run this. I hope it will work if we take a look here on our device. So as soon as the app boots up, you will see this permission request that is working fine. So we obviously want to say allow because otherwise we can't use our foreground service since it needs to come with a um, notification. So let's click allow. Now we have our two buttons to start and stop our run. If I click start run, a little bit laggy here, then our app crashes. Um, let's take a look and look at why that is. Maybe I missed something. Oh yes, I actually did miss something. Of course, we need to specify where to send this intent to, because right now we just specified an action, but we need to specify the service class. So let's just cut this action out here and we specify the application context and our service class. So running service double colon class at Java. And then we can specify the action separately here and set it to this. We can then again, copy this intent, paste it here and just replace the action with stop. Let's relaunch this and hopefully it will now work. The permission is already accepted, so the request won't come again. If we now click start run, then uh, the first time it can sometimes take a little moment, um, but it at least doesn't crash anymore. And there it is. You can see we get a notification, the run is active, and this is now persistent. So even if we close our app or minimize it, then I'm not sure if, if we close our app. Oops, um, let's try that. If we close our app, then yeah the notification is still active. So um, the app will remain active with that foreground service. And if we relaunch this again to see it um, and we launch the service with start run, then this time we get it immediately for some reason and then click stop run, we should 
not see the notification anymore because our service is cancelled or stopped. You can see it disappeared so that is working perfectly fine now. But before you go I have two more things that you have to know about foreground services. On the one hand if we take a look in our manifest there are different types of foreground services which we can specify here by having the foreground service type. If we type this, then it suggests uh, different options that we have here. So camera, connected device, location, microphone, phone call. So with that, if you have one of these types of foreground service, so for example, if your foreground service is used to keep a phone call active, if it's used to track the user's location, then you need to select these types because by default, Android is quite restrictive, for example, if you want to track the user's location in the background. And it only allows that with a foreground service because then the user knows that the app is currently tracking the location if the service is active, but that only works if you specify it as such a service that is used to track location. Or if it needs to access the user's camera in the background. For example, if you have a video calling app or so and the user's in the background, then the service might need to access the user's camera. So depending on what your service does, you might want to take a look at the actions and if it does something yeah that goes in the sensitive direction then definitely um, check these types here and assign the right type to your service and the other thing that many people don't know about foreground services is that the service if the service is running that also automatically means that your app is active so you don't need to put all your source code inside of the service class that your app should do in the background because as long as the service is active your app's process will also be active. So all classes that are instantiated in your app that are being used, all view models, they will also be active and the code in it will work. So I would really only use the service class here to communicate with the service, to update the notification and to really just do what this service needs to do. But for example, for displaying the timer, for tracking the user's location, in this case here, I would create separate classes that your service might use and just call some functions on. Because in my early days as an Android developer, I made the mistake and I put everything the service did inside of this class. And this can sometimes grow to to 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 lines of code in just this class and it becomes unmaintainable. So I hope you enjoyed this. In the next video, we're going to talk about Work Manager and what that is, how it compares to foreground services. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, definitely leave a subscribe to not miss the next video and all future videos. There will be two new videos every single week. Have an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.